How's it going everybody? Welcome or welcome back to another video. And today we are gonna be talking about how to get from gold to platinum in Halo Infinite ranked. Let's get into it. All right, first off, we're gonna talk about the general areas I want you to be focusing on and then what you can do in each area to improve your skills. So more so it's gonna be a five categories and then tips within each category rather than just five generalized tips. I feel like that wouldn't be anywhere near as helpful. This way you'll be able to follow the timestamps down below in the video to go to a specific category where you think you might be ex exceptionally weak in, or you can just watch the whole video to cover everything and come back to it when you wanna improve something else. So here are the five categories. The first one, and this is in first place for a reason, it's communication and teamwork. The second category is going to be winning fights. The third category, which this category along with the fourth category tie into what I like to call game awareness or game knowledge. So anyway, the third category is overall weapon knowledge. And then number four is overall map knowledge. Keep in mind those two tie into what I just mentioned. Number five, and which is definitely last but not least at all, is your keybinds and your mouse sensitivity, as well as I've got a couple controller tips up my sleeve, but I don't play on controller. I'm on PC and keyboard and mouse. So hopefully my tips for controller are good for you. Also, there's gonna be a bonus sixth category at the end, which I'll dive into at the end, so stick around for that. Moving into number one, communication and teamwork. Whether you're playing solos or with your friends in ranked, you need to number one, make sure you are using your communication, your comms, your mic, your markers, everything. Make sure you're using your marker, mark incoming enemies, call it out over the mic right away, right when you mark it. Do both. If you can do both, that's awesome. If you can only do one, that's better than nothing. You can go ahead and use the link in the description down below to go to Reddit for the popular map callouts that a awesome Redditor made. He watches a lot of Halo. He says everything in his post. I would say it's a great starting point, but it's not perfect by any means. But it is a very good universal knowledge to have for map callouts so that you can use those as well. Otherwise, watch some of your favorite streamers, maybe even watch the Halo Championship series, and you'll be able to develop some of your own callouts as well. If you're losing a fight to two, Mark it on the map, call it out, let them know like if one guy is low and if you have game awareness, like I was mentioning a little bit earlier and we'll get into later, you'll know exactly where your teammates are. So if you know that you have a teammate behind you defending an objective or slaying a couple other enemies, let your teammate know immediately, hey man, I'm dying to two here, one guy's low on shields, you know, blah, 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 what weapons they have, where they're located, where they're heading after you die, etc. Something you can do to help mitigate extra chatter is something I personally would recommend to use. It's more of an esports type ordeal, I feel like, but it could be really fun if your friends are down. Use what's called a leader cycle or a squad leader or a team leader cycle. If you're playing with friends, of course, if you're playing solo, you won't really be able to do this, but this way everybody gets a chance to lead the team towards a certain direction, position or objective that they think would be best. And even better, you can do the same thing for maps or different game modes as well, rather than just having us a, a continuous cycle. But I would recommend that everybody gets a chance to lead every game mode and every map, not just specializing like, hey, this guy's really good at oddball on bizarre. You know, okay, just make sure that everybody gets a chance to do everything so that you can all build your skill in every category. Overall, for the first section here, communication and teamwork, you need to make sure you are improving how much you talk, but you need to also make sure you're adding value to your team at all times, not just spitting out random info that isn't necessarily gonna be helpful. Make sure 100% you are always using your marker if you can. If you can't, like you can't reach it, I would rebind it, but we'll get into that later as well. Use your marker especially if you're solo queuing. Oh goodness, that'll help you millions, I promise. Jumping into number two here is gonna be winning fights. Now, winning fights can be really, really hard and it can get really, really frustrating, especially when you start playing people who are just way out of your league, so much better than you. You know, you're playing an Onyx player when you're fucking bronze somehow because that just is fucking nuts. And it, it sucks, I've been there, trust me. The easiest and quickest way to improve your ability to win fights is gonna be implementing movement during your fights. So I'm sure, I'm sure you've seen it anywhere, strafing back and forth, crouching, jumping, flying all over the fucking place, trying to jump across the map in one movement. I would highly recommend avoiding constantly jumping and just try strafing and crouching, not jumping. If you didn't know already, jumping was super fucking meta in Halo 3. That's how you used to be able to tell, oh, that guy's a really good player. I would highly suggest not jumping as much in Halo Infinite. You can still jump once in a while. I still have to learn more about jumping and perfect the timing for when to jump, 
but you would definitely want to focus on crouching and strafing. I would recommend practicing in regular pubs or the academy or custom games so you don't have to worry really about losing your rank. But if you want to practice in ranked, that is totally fine as well. I would recommend trying to keep your strafes wide, but not too wide. I would kind of imagine like you're standing on a dead Spartan body and keep your strafe width to about that size. You can strafe extra to one side or strafe extra to the other side. Maybe add a crouch, you know, definitely want to add a crouch in the middle somewhere. But don't make it so dramatic that you can't aim because you're still going to have to aim. You don't want to forget about that. Another huge, major, extraordinary thing that's going to help you win fights is going to be improving your aim. And there's no magic pill that you can take, no magic routine you can follow to just instantly improve your aim overnight. That's not how this works. I'm not offering a $600 magic pill, blue or red or pink or orange or fucking, it doesn't matter. You're going to have to work, all right? Look, I know it sucks, but download this amazing thing called Aim Labs on Steam if you play on PC. And with Aim Labs, you can practice your aim. It's literally just an aim game. If you've never heard of it, it's just an aim trainer. That's all it is. The more you work on it, the different weapons you use in Halo Infinite, the more you play in aim, aim Labs, the more you practice in custom games on Spartan level with headshot only active, you're going to get better over time. And lastly here, the last thing I'm going to mention here about winning fights is having a solid weapon map and overall knowledge of how Halo works as a game. And that's going to tie into 3 and 4 here very shortly, but knowing, having general game knowledge, where things spawn, etc, etc, it's going to help you win fights dramatically. If you're interested in seeing gold, platinum, or diamond level ranked gameplay broken down, answering questions like, why did he go that way, or why didn't he make that call out, or, well, he should have made that call out, first of all, you know, etc, etc, like how to capture flags, timing, stuff like that. Let me know down in the comments down below and I could definitely work on putting a video like that together for you. But moving on to number three, that's gonna be weapon knowledge. Now, knowing when to use what weapon is extremely important. For example, you don't wanna waste rocket ammo on a damn near dead enemy by missing your shot. Then you just have to melee his ass anyways and you're fucked. Of course, every situation is gonna be different. So you just kind of have to gauge it yourself sometimes as well. But my first tip here in this category is for you to know that headshots do not do extra damage to shielded opponents. You know, unless you have a power weapon like the sniper, of course. But, for example, if you're using the assault rifle and you shoot him in the head 50 times, it's not going to do any more damage than shooting him in the head or shooting him in the body 50 times if he's shielded. Secondly here, energy and or plasma weapons, basically any alien weapon, is going to literally disintegrate enemy shields if you didn't know that so things like the pulse carbine or the plasma pistol is a very good example or the shock rifle is a pretty decent example as well as the disruptor pistol and then once the enemy shields are down you're going to want to use kinetic or human weapons to do extra damage to unshielded enemies so for example pull out the plasma pistol fully charge it bust this guy's shields off switch to your magnum shoot him in the head once and he's dead now, if you did it the other way around, you shoot the guy in the head once with a magnum and then bust his shields, he's still going to be alive. Does that make sense? Something like always knowing what weapons are going to spawn and where they're going to spawn, how long it takes them for to respawn, that's going to be major to dominating the battlefield, especially in ranked, because in ranked, weapons don't change, whereas in regular pubs, the weapon spawns change. Have you ever noticed that when you play a regular Slayer pub or quick play, you know, whatever? The rocket launcher might spawn in the middle, but then another time it might be a grenade launcher or a sniper rifle or a different, somewhat similar power weapon. That's because in regular matches, it constantly changes, whereas in a ranked match on Bazaar, the rocket launcher will always spawn on tower. No matter what, if you're playing ranked, it will always be a rocket launcher and it will always spawn on tower. Another tip for this category is going to be knowing how many shots you need to connect with different weapons. So, for example, the Pulse Carbine only needs one full burst of five shots to connect before you can melee kill, and it needs six shots to connect before you can instant kill with a kinetic or human headshot, for example, the Magnum. Now, for the Battle Rifle, you need four full bursts to connect in order to get a kill, and the last burst with, within the four bursts needs to be a headshot. So, three shots to the body to a shielded opponent, one to the head for the, for the Battle Rifle. I'm also going to be working on diving into each weapon in Halo Infinite and how to 
to slay with them since this is the how to slay series so that you can get more details of each weapon in Halo. So drop a sub down below if you want to see that and more Halo Infinite content. Sliding into number four, this is going to be overall map knowledge. Now this is the second category that constitutes general game knowledge or awareness. And this is going to be super important. As an advanced player, you want to know where your objectives are at all times, as well as where the spawn points are for each map and how to work around with and use the map to your advantage. And I'm going to admit, this is something I personally really need to work on. I need to start memorizing spawn areas. I need to start memorizing map callouts, which is more of a part of number one, which is the communication and teamwork. I need to work on this like a shit ton. Now, I would say a good majority of maps in Halo Infinite have two major spawn points. And that's going to obviously be on opposing sides of the map for blue and red. And then I would say most maps in Halo Infinite will have secondary spawn points, sometimes third spawn points as well, where if one team has one player on one side of the map and three players on the other side of the map covering the major spawn points, your team is going to spawn in secondary spawn points or even third spawn points so that you aren't spawn killed. A good example would be Aquarius. The two major spawn points of the map are behind either of the bases, and the secondary spawn points for that map are in... Really, dude? A good example would be the map Aquarius. There are two major spawn points on that map, and those are behind either of the bases, and the secondary spawn points for that map are going to be in the fridge and the closet hallway thing, whatever you want to call that. So if your team or the enemy team is occupying both of the major spawn points, and you are killed, or your entire team is killed, or vice versa, the people who died are going to spawn in the closet hallway thing, or the fridge, or potentially both. So you got to keep that in mind, and that will help you dramatically increase your gameplay as well. Something that will also dramatically increase your gameplay is knowing where the spawn points are, like I just said, and what weapons might have spawned there. So another little thing to know is when you spawn in a specific area, it'll be who of you to know what weapons have spawned there as well. All right, moving into number five, getting close to being done here. This is going to be keyboard binds, mouse sensitivity and settings, as well as controller suggestions. I don't have very many of those because I play on PC, but here we go. So first off, I'm going to say I discovered an entirely new way to play video games as a whole, not just Halo Infinite, on PC. I switched from using the WASD keys, and I switched one key to the right, and I currently use ESDF. Now, you don't have to play like this. But, oh my god, is it amazing. I highly, 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 highly recommend you play like this. At least try it out for a day, two days, maybe even three days. If you're willing, try it for a whole week. And if you don't like it, you can always switch back. It's not that big a deal. But I have switched every PC game I play to ESDF. And that's how you move now. Is E is forward, S is left, D is back, F is right. It's amazing. It gives you the whole left side of, that, of those keys right there to fiddle with and bind to whatever you want. The best suggestion I can give for keybinds and mouse sensitivity is really, really simple. Change it around a little bit. Mouse sensitivity, if you have buttons on your mouse, bind stuff to it. Keyboard bindings, etc., etc. Adjust it to what you think is going to be most comfortable for you, and then leave it that way. Leave it that way for a while, unless there is specifically something you can't use, like you forgot to map your marker key so you can't fucking mark, mark in solo matches. Obviously, you're going to need to change that, but leave it how it is, especially, especially, especially for mouse sensitivity, because mouse sensitivity, it's crucial that you just get used to how you play, and then once you figure out your eDPI or effective DPI, I won't dive too much into it, you'll be able to adjust your in-game settings or you'll be able to adjust your dpi that you per that you enjoy playing at so you'll be able to fiddle around with it and then move back to what you used to have if you liked it better that way so figure out what you enjoy or what you think you'll enjoy leave it that way for a while play with it i would say at least two weeks minimum absolute minimum i would recommend a month and then if you are starting to get the hang of it or you decide that you don't generally like it write down what you have bound and then adjust it from there so that you can always revert back if you don't like it. I'm going to leave a somewhat in-depth DPI guide by PC Gamer article link in the description below. It's titled, Why Low DPI is Best for Shooters. You don't have to read it by any means, but I would suggest reading it if you want to learn more about DPI and how to really improve your mouse sensitivity gaming. Really, the only tips that I have for controller are going to be generally the same as well. 
set your binds, figure out what you enjoy, what's comfortable, make sure everything works, and then get used to it. Stick with it for a while, memorize where you had it or write it down, and then you can fiddle with it a little bit and then change it back if you don't like it. The only other suggestion I would have for controller players is going to be to find a controller style you like that has rear, uh, rear buttons, rear, like, bumpers. Something like the uh, Elite Xbox controller or a Scuff Gaming controller. Something that has those four flaps paddles on the back, whatever the hell that is. So that you can utilize those for whatever you want as well. That'll give you a few extra buttons to push so you don't have to play the right stick with your index finger and the fucking side buttons with your pinky. Some people play professionally like that. It's really crazy. Anyways, moving on to the final tip, number six, the bonus tip, and that's going to be building a team. Now, this uh, might be a little underwhelming for a bonus tip, but if you are a solo player and you're looking to build a team or find people to play with, I would suggest joining Discord servers, playing with like regular pub matches and adding people online, etc., etc. Now, I'm not really going to count this as a tip, but again, it's something you should really think about doing if you're a solo player. Finding players you can get along with and communicate well with and play well with is huge when you're trying to climb the ranks in literally any game in general. I'm honestly currently on the same mission right now. I'm trying to build myself a team or just a group of really good competitive friends that can also play pubs. I find it really freaking hard to build a solid team. You know, a lot of my friends from work are, they're more relaxed and they enjoy to play the game, like just chilling all the time, whereas I'm kind of more of an intense player. I can relax a little bit, but I really want to get to Onyx and Halo Infinite. So if you are somewhere around gold three to diamond one, I would love to play with you in some pubs or ranked matches. You can join my discord, just there's a link in the description to my discord, or you can follow me on any of my social medias and maybe we can grind all the way to Onyx together. Peace! Damn it, dude. He got me too. He's no shields coming from yellow utility into our base. There's one in uh, top side behind you, G1. Nice, GG guys. <laughs>